Welcome old family and new family to Boom Bap, the capital ED. This is your host with the most, Brandon White, a.k.a. Bushido Garvey, as I'm known in some MC circles. And ladies and gentlemen, we have Rob Lowe on the tech as per usual. But we got a special guest in the building right now. We got the artiste, the edumacator, the Wilson Wildcat in the flesh, Miss LaVon Barfield. Hello, hello. Peace and love all day, every day, everyone. Um, yes, it's me, love. Oh, I'm in the building. Yes, yeah. yes. Peace and love to everybody, including the lesser East High Orientals <laughs> that were throwing some shade in the background. Brother yeah. Rob Lowe on the tech trying to sneak this. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? For those who don't know, Boom Bap is an honest, open, and clear-headed exploration of education and cultural issues focused on but not limited to the Rochester area through a hip-hop lens. What's going on, Miss LeVar? I am well. I am blessed. I am well. I believe it. (laughs) So what we usually do when we have people come on the show is just run down their resume real quick. Their one-minute elevator speech. Right, right. Okay. Right? Quick intro of who you are, what you do professionally or outside of work, or just what makes you tick. All right. So, Love On is my name. Yes. <laughs> um, all right. So, I'm an artist, um, and that is L-O-V-E-O-N, Love On. My name is Love On, L-A-V-O-N-N-E, but um, my art name is Love On. Bars. So, <laughs> right. Um, so, <laughs> I do a lot. Yep. All right, let's start. I do poetry. I sing. I'm in a band. I uh, write. I knew that. Yeah, um, I'm in a band. I write. Um, I sing. I said sing already, right? Yep. Uh, I do art. So I paint. I do freestyle painting, like live art at different events, or I do prophetic artwork, which is like hearing from the Lord and then doing it, and then when it's like done. I normally do that to like live music or something like that. Um, I do commission pieces. I teach art. Um, man, I, I I motivate. I encourage. I am just trying to be a light out here. So I do and, a and lot, and I feel like there's more, but I can't think of it right now. I know there's more, but yeah. yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> that, that's a pretty lengthy resume for sure. Um, we also like to ask a little icebreaker question real quick before we really get into all the things that you kind of ran down. Um, if you could do visual art for any author or book, who would it be and why? And if you could do visual art for any music artist or album, who or what would it be and why? All right, these are good questions. So Thank you. we try doing that. <laughs> um, the book. So like the first book that popped into my head was the coldest winter ever. Remember that book? Sister because Soldier. it was yes, it's a yeah. soldier. Um, that that was like one of the first books that like the visual was more important to me than the actual mm. book. Like the book was yeah. amazing, but the visual just how they used the colors. So I would want to do like that book, but my own rendition of yeah. um the cover art. And then that book had people reading in our age. Yes. That nobody like it wasn't like everybody was just trying to read at our age. No. But when that book was out, like a lot of people it was like middle school or yeah. high school yeah. Like non readers is picking up that well, book. Shout out like, to Sister business. Soja for yes. getting people to read mm-hmm. unconventional. Yes. Um, so yeah, that's dope. Um and that's kinda like where I wanna be. I wanna get people to do things that they didn't know that they could or wanted to do. Right. Like, oh my goodness, I should have been doing this this whole time. Like reading. People <laughs> read. Um uh, music cover art that I will well <laughs> can, can I say that I don't know oh, of course well, I, I was going to bring it up later and, oh no well then okay so nope so then I will um, go with um, uh, okay so somebody who you like actually yeah. you know um man there's so many like amazing musicians and bands I don't know um I would want to do like a uh, a piece for like Nina Simone. So yeah, cause she, yeah, yeah, Nina so, Simone. So if uh, <laughs> whatever record company came to and was like, hey, listen, we like we're doing a posthumous uh, record of Nina Simone, would you be down? I would be down. Even if they paid you five dollars and seventy eight cents. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because it's about the reach. Indeed, for real. So. Let's talk more about your visual art real quick. As a visual artist, to my understanding, because I knew, we went to high school and Buff State. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shout out yep. Buff State. Yep, yep. Uh, all, all cat, all cat themed right. schools, Wildcats and Bengals, right? Lots of felines. Indeed. <laughs> 
you didn't go for visual arts, right? I went for um, communications. Yes. And so my concentration, my major was advertising and PR. Mm. Um, and then I had a minor in athletic coaching because I ran track forever. That's right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was good. So, yeah, that was cool. Um, so, yeah, I went for public communications, um, liberal arts. I did have, like, art classes and such, but no, I didn't go for a concentration, a concentration in art. What, what are some of the um, positives about getting into visual arts without doing it in an academy? And what might be some of the challenges that it just because of? The, or, or is there one or the other? Is it a mix of both? Or Well, uh, for me, uh, this was a God gift. So yeah. it was never, I never really thought that I could do it as a professional career. Um, I just didn't know that it was like for me to do. Um, so not being in the the field when I was in college like learning about actual like art techniques um I don't feel like I, I lost anything or I think that my uh freedom of my creativity because I'm not limited to like what oh the books have told me this is how I'm supposed to do it I can just express and I can create um freely so I love that um I do I, I do my due diligence of actually learning things. Like, I'm not just out here like, well, I want to do this this way. So I'm going to, like, I, I've learned techniques over time. And then I have mentors and people that have shown me certain things. And um, I, like I said, I do my due diligence. I research. I, I learn. I, I watch a lot of stuff. I, without a school? Without a school. What? Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm hungry for That's knowledge. Right. I am a philomath. So Word. I am a lover of learning. Rob, man, we got to do something about this word wall. We keep on talking about doing a word wall in here hmm. for for words that were like key in conversation. You said a philomath? Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to pretend to know what that is. I know philo means lover. Mm -hmm. Like that's the Greek root for uh, a philo. Can you talk? Can you tell? Uh, can you tell me and the world what that is? Yes, I just did. A philomath is a lover of learning. Yes, nice, <laughs> awesome. Hashtag context clues. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So, in addition to being a visual artist, you just ran down the gamut of other uh, art mediums that you do. You do prophetic art, you do the poetry, you're part of a band. Um, can you describe the intersection between the visual arts and music? Because you also, in addition to saying that you would do album art for Nina Simone, you also did, shameless plug, the album art for my upcoming album, 30 Rock. Can you describe what the intersection is between visual art and music? Yes, uh, for me, it is like it's like one of my lifelines. So um, to be able to create, I am a I I hear I I hear sounds sometimes. Well, not sometimes, all the time. Everyone hears sound. No, not everyone. But I hear sounds. I see sounds sometimes. Um, and so I want to be able to. Um, pour out what I'm actually like seeing or feeling um, in music like the beat because drums is like the, the heartbeat of like God so um, when I hear that I'm like okay well, what is this where is this taking me and then it just I flow like I'm a flow <laughs> I guess yes. I flow in uh, the art medium so I can like I don't know I just I flow um, and music helps me to be able to flow easier Word. That makes, that makes tons of sense. Um, even now in, in this in this uh, interview, being able to have the music in the background allows me to feel more comfortable and flourish. Even though there are set questions, right. I'm still able to be more comfortable in that set, flex that set, etc. Right? Right, right. So, <clears throat> what are some of the most important things about artistry that you've learned just about the craft? And what are two of the most important things you learn about yourself in the midst of being an artist? Okay. Um, so for the first part, uh, I've learned that there are no mistakes in art. I yeah. tell people this all the time. Like you are a masterpiece because you are a piece of the master and that mm -hmm. you are able to create because you are a part of the creator. Like that's that's always going to be where I go. Um, and so, Bars again. <laughs> and so, um, say that one more time. You said... <laughs> You are a, you're a you're masterpiece because you're a piece of the master. You are a piece of the master, yes. 
Yeah. Um, and so I show people that you can do it too. Like people are like, no, I can't even draw a straight line. I can't draw a circle. I'm like, no, I don't believe you. I think that everybody can be an artist. I think there's an artist in everyone. They just sometimes haven't tapped into it. Maybe because of fear, maybe because of doubt. I don't know. But um, I do believe that art is healing and it is something that just is a calming, relaxing state for people to be in and it brings about change. So, yeah. Um, and the uh, second part. No, go ahead. No, finish. The second part was. Um, Oh, okay. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> um, what were, I guess, uh, what were some things you learned about yourself? Oh, yeah. In the process. Yeah. That I am, um, I'm special. <laughs> 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 that I really am. Um, this is my purpose plan, and this is what I was created to do. Um, to inspire, to heal, to help, to bring joy and love, to bring a reflection of God, um, through art, and to like be amongst the people and propel them to their future um, through art which is dope so I know that I have a big I have a big big journey ahead of me um, but I'm okay with that because I'm excited about I'm, I'm excited about it I want to live a life that's poured out and so all of this stuff I've been learning through art like it's not easy especially to be a full-time professional artist and I'm like this is right. what I do like and people don't really understand what it means to be an artist or like when I so um, being able to be business savvy and still be my authentic, creative, free self, um, which can sometimes come back. Because I'm like, oh, no, I just want to give my art away for free. I want everybody to be able to. <laughs> right, right, and right. I can't do that because it's like this is supposed to be a business. It is a business. So uh, learning that and just maturing in different avenues. And can you um, explain more about that process uh, as a philomath? Mm -hmm. That's it. I work with as a philomath who had to learn how to add the business component to something that you're very passionate and selfless about. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because like, when you throw money in, that can complicate things, obviously. What, what were some things you had to w describe that path more in terms of how you went about getting that, your education, your personal education about that? So uh, I got yelled at a lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah. by people that are close to me. Like, yeah. why are you devaluing? Why, why am I devaluing myself? Um, and really to step back and really like look at it, it's like, you no, know, other people can't really do this. Like how you do this. This is a special thing. Your gifts were supposed to make room for you. So I needed to learn that and really like apply that. Like I knew it, but uh, you know a lot of stuff that you don't do. So um, shout out to my older sister um, who was like, LaVon, if you uh, keep giving your stuff away for bare minimum you're going to continue to live a bare minimum life and i was like well dang um you're right and so um just yeah that and then um i was able to be connected to um my mentor and now uh boss but um for coloring on canvas which is the company that i work for yep. um and i am the man i'm the art i'm the assistant art director for this company and so um to be able to see and go into the meetings and kind of just be a, like a fly on the wall but yeah. she is about her business so being oh kalavani <laughs> the lady uh, kalavani um so shout out to her for uh also giving me a kick in the butt like um so i want to have a platform where artists make money for being an artist and you yeah. don't have to compromise and you, so um having that space now and someone to learn from that's done it already Word. um as the is a blessing so, yeah. Word up. you um also talked about this process because i can imagine oh and my grandma she also was like levon stop giving your stuff away i know all these people that want to be able to want to support you but you are doubting how much you want to charge people and i'm like oh yeah you're right so, set prices <laughs> and they, me and my manager are actually kind of going through that Rob in, in addition to uh, uh, being the tech he's also my manager we talk about that a decent amount actually our last conversation was about charging and what that means and being sensitive to people's needs but also being sensitive to valuing yourself so that's actually pretty encouraging you also noted like so you have your art and then you have the economics and the economics can you know make things a little bit more confusing for the art but then you also have the spiritual piece right so when you have this trifecta of elements 
I can see how all both of those two, the economics and the spiritual, might it might cause not doesn't cause it to be well. I guess it can cause it to be more complicated or I guess more vigilant about the kind of art and how you move with your art. Can you talk? About, you talked about how the economics impacts the art. You talk about the spiritual piece and how that impacts the art. Oh yeah. Um, it's at the center of everything. Like yeah. I don't do anything unless uh, I am led to do it. Yeah. Um, so I've had uh, people that have approached me to do things, and I was like, yeah, no, I'm, no, I'm not gonna be able to do that. Um, because I'm not going to um, contaminate my anointing, <laughs> kind of. Um, so, yeah, um, God is at the center of everything. So the people that see me, they're like, oh, there's something special about you. Oh, your, your, your vibe is so light and bright. And I'm like, yeah, that's the God in me. Like, I will always bring everything back to God. Like, if I don't bring the Lord up, and somebody better uh, come tap me and like, hey, LaVon, what's going on with you? Right? Because yeah. that means something is a little off. Because truly, my life is centered around the Lord. And I want to live a life poured out and pleasing to the Lord. So. That's what's up. So keeping it at the center disallows any potential complications right. to come um, through. Like the, they happen, but it makes it easier to right. get over those hurdles. Um, yeah, because I always go back and I center. I center my, like, why am I doing this? Is this? This is my purpose plan. And so this is why I'm doing it. And then the other stuff will come. So I also, I also realize I am an optimistic person. I always see the upside of things. Like, uh, you know that saying, oh, that my cup is half full or half empty. My right. cup is half full and there's more in the fridge if oh. I need it. So, like, that's that's the Go on with the bars all day, son. <laughs> Said, my cup. Uh, you know what? I'm at. I'm at to take that. Yeah. You know, you're, you're gonna see a song on Thirty Rock called "Half Full, Half Empty." Some in the fridge. All Watch. Right. <laughs> She's gonna be. <laughs> I'm gonna have to sue. Nah. Um, but I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. No, I mean that's um really it. Like I, I have to make sure that I um am seeing the upside of anything because there's so much negativity in the world. I yeah. don't live in that space. I, there, mm -mm, I don't live there. That is not for me. I wouldn't even be able to function. I wouldn't, no. Yeah. All of the mental and the pre all this stuff, I have to be a light. Like, that is my assignment. I have to encourage, I have to uplift, and like, yeah, that's where I'm at. So, yeah, it's sometimes heavy, cause yeah. like you're pouring out all the time and you need to be refilled. Um, but I am my community, my tribe is a uh, tight. And so I do know that people are there when I need them. And I am also, cause sometimes I like, as an artist, you need to isolate sometimes and just Absolutely. like be Absolutely. in quietness. Um, but not doing that too much because that can also lead to other stuff that people don't need to go into darkness. And yeah, but um, so being a light is really what my purpose is. So what I shall do. To the nation, going international. <laughs> okay, I, I believe it. I definitely believe it. So <laughs> we're gonna get into a, a, a activity that we do. We haven't done this in a while, Rob. Um, where we call? Oh, I don't know what we was calling it the first. One. I'm calling it now. It's, we're gonna battle. Okay. Right? We're gonna battle now with them bars. I'm really worried about how this battle is gonna be. I right? Say, I got bars out I know, here. I know. So, I'm, uh. I'm, I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> But it's called pick a side battle, right? So I'm gonna make a statement. Okay. You have to say whether or not you kind of like. For it or against it. Yeah, exactly. Kind of like the anticipatory sets we do in the classroom, where you say you uh, strongly agree, agree, disagree, strongly disagree. Okay. Right. I'm gonna make a statement. You state where you're at. I'll probably take the exact opposite course, and I'm gonna go to the other. So. I'm gonna say it first. Oh, okay. hey, my bad. <clears throat> Although the arts have their place in schools, when the core class departments such as math, ELA, science, etc., need funding, the arts departments may have to take a back seat. Strongly agree, agree, disagree, or strongly disagree? Strongly disagree. Well, I happen to conveniently strongly agree. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this is what's going to happen, right? You are going, we're going to not rhyme, but we're going to make 
arguments backing up why we strongly agree or why we strongly disagree. In the first round, we have to use at least two of the five words in the round one section. Word one is criminal for those listening. Criminal, economy, sensational, reservoir, or tackle. Two out of those five words have to be used in your elaboration of why you feel like you strongly disagree in this. And then I'll respond in kind of how I strongly disagree with two or three words. Okay, so I strongly disagree with this statement that um, art should take a backseat to the core subjects in school because <laughs> of <laughs> um, what it actually tackles uh, mentally, emotionally, uh, spiritually for children, for adults, for everyone. So I believe that it tackles um, a lot that uh, these other subjects don't. <laughs> um, I also believe that um, in the economy we live in, they have to know that there are other avenues to success than what they have been traditionally taught. And I think that these subjects that have been traditionally taught and saying that they supersede others such as arts and no, not true because art is a language. Art is more, it actually incorporates itself into all these other sub subjects. So it's necessary. And if you don't have that outlet to actually do it, um, then you're losing. Well, I strongly disagree because the economy requires more science, tech, engineering, and math. So if one of the two has to be cut, then it'll be criminal to cut math as opposed to painting. Right? <laughs> we need a reservoir of literate, mathematically literate, linguistically literate, and, histor and history literate students in order to tackle this very, very, very bad place that we're in in terms of being the developed country, but being like 35th in education. Yes, but then they become drones and <laughs> they don't know wait, how wait, to wait, express wait, 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 their up. emotions. Hold up. <laughs> round two. Now you just said she was ready for round two. <laughs> she was ready for round two. She's like, you know what? I ain't going to let that go. Full, full disclosure, I again, this is just me battling. I don't necessarily feel this way, right, so please right. don't beat me up in the parking lot. Um, round two, in your response to what I got to say, use compare, share, fair, bear, or pair. I would say two or three out of those five. That's how we roll. Well, it's not fair for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> It's not fair for you to say that those subjects uh, create um, better people, basically. That's what you were saying. Like, they're more able to uh, fit into this culture, which we may have to think about if that is actually what we want our future to do. Because the culture that we live in, uh, compared to what it could be, um, is very sad. And I believe that it is, uh, it is because art is not actually understood and taught and learned as a core subject. Um, hmm, I think I gotta use another word, don't well, You I? use like three. Okay. Yep, yep you good. Oh, yeah. uh, yep. <laughs> well, I still think that you can't compare the worth of having a strong mathematics or literacy background to visual arts. And it's unfortunate we don't share the same opinion <laughs> But I do think it's fair to say that I'm right. <laughs> Lies you tell. <laughs> indeed, indeed. No, that 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 hurt for me to say those things at times for sure. So before we before we sign out, we we try to do our best to do this. We haven't done this in a while either. Is we usually close out with a very simple question. Your top five. Oh yeah, no, I know. But like we actually get to talk about it this time you know what i'm saying like because <laughs> instead of trying to squeeze it in like uh, in the last minute um your top five we prefer i mean we would like for you to say your top five mcs of all time if you don't want to go the mc route whatever artist you're comfortable with saying top five visual or otherwise okay um 
Top five artists. Uh, any aspect of creativity. All right, so Nina Simone, because she's like my fave, one of my faves. Have you seen that um that Netflix documentary? I have. Right? Yeah. Um, that, yeah. And it was... It's powerful. It was. Um, it's, sad. it's sad. It was. But it's powerful. And so, seeing that, like, that was... That's one of the things that I'll be talking about. Because, like, all mm. these artists out here... <laughs> they, they live in these sad lives. Because mm. they are not first connected to a positive community that actually mm. wants to pour into them. Because they're pouring out all the time. Right. Having someone that pours back in. Um. So, Nina Simone... Uh... India Ari, of course. Uh, Lauren Hill, uh, Erica Badu, uh, and I'm gonna go with uh, Jesus because <laughs> he was mad dope. He, yes. he had mad bars. <laughs> yes, he did. He did. That sermon on the mount. Yeah, no joke. Bars for days. Right. But I guess I mean let me, I'm gonna try to use your bars real quick to. Um, to further elaborate on that argument we're all masterpieces because we're a piece of the master who's the master of masterpieces so why wouldn't he be a masterpiece <laughs> you piece that bars. together but yeah. you a master of piecing things together so that's what's up <laughs> bars on bars on bars out here 30 rock the new album <laughs> he stopped but yeah <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> but um so, India Ire, do you think that she'll be releasing anything soon? Yeah, I she did. She released something just recently. Really? Yeah. Um, it was over in uh, San Francisco or something, she said. Okay. And she was feeling at peace and all of that. So, she uh, she released something. I don't remember the name of it. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because three of the, um, the artists who just said... They come from a time period where supposedly music was whack, right? Like, cause I remember, like, well, you know, people at that time were like, oh, well, you know, music right now isn't what it is. But there was a lot of neo. That was like the neo soul yeah. movement, and that was huge from like the late '90s to the early 2000s. Cause Lauryn Hill dropped in like '98, Erica Badu same time, Indiari. But they're uh, still names that you know. Still names that you. They they made their mark Legendary. forever. They can never ever drop another. I mean, what? Um, Miss Education Lauren Hill celebrated is what? It's 20th year mm -hmm. this year. So, you know, salute to her. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit without promoting? Because uh, <laughs> at Wayo, we don't we don't promote. We inform the public. Yes. Um, about the things you got coming up. Yeah. Um. So the things I have coming up. Uh. So the next thing is actually I'll be walking. Oh. I model, <laughs> so I'll be walking oh, in a Buffalo, a Buffalo fashion show, Pandemonium. Um, that'll be on the 29th of September, and then the next week, the 6th, I will be one of the performers at the Power of the P, which will be at the Legacy Drama Theater, um, and it's a all woman event. Uh, so the power of the P, it sounds like it's something, ooh, risque. But um, my P is painting. Um, the other artists, one is poetry, piano, and photography. So this will be the second year that we're putting this production on um, with Rebel Flower Bomb. Shout out to her. This was her brainchild. Um, yeah, amazing. And so um, she asked me to be a part of it last year, not knowing really all of what I do. Um, and she was like, oh my gosh, I need you to do this again. Like, I want you to be a part of this every time. So I'm like, yeah, I would love to because I love the mission and where it's going. Um, empowerment and just uh, seeking healing and uh, good vibes and love. So yes, I will be a part of that. And then also um, in October on the 27th, I will be doing a show in Buffalo, uh, Onyx and Pearls which is a art and hair fashion show. They'll bring art alive on the runway. Cool. Yeah. That's what's up. That's and I'll going. be a designer for that one. So um, my uh, art, I'm, I can't really tell you what I'm doing, but it'll be super dope. Um, so. yep. And you will also be seeing uh, Bond's artwork on um, the 30 Rock project that I'll be releasing. Um, still TBD. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, um, 
Levon, thank you for coming through. This is it was a great interview. We really had a great time. For those who are new to the family, you've been listening to Boom Bap. Um, you can catch us on 104.3 Whale FM, way out there, right? On every Tuesday from 1.30 to 2. We also have a Facebook group. Check us out online through that as well and on Mixcloud. Um, we look forward to having y'all listen again. Peace and progress. That was good.